And uh, we're recording. Audio levels are looking good. Everything's looking good. Guys, I'm going to try my best to look straight into the camera and not up to the side. There is something that uh, I'm considering doing. So you can let me have your thoughts. That's basically for those of you listening to on this, this on audio. <laughs> it's, uh, it's about wearing a pair of sunglasses so that it looks like I'm looking at the camera. It's a little trick. I learned from Casey Neistat. Um, guys, let me just adjust that mic a bit more. Sorry about that noise. So welcome to, uh, our, I suppose, our first episode for 2021. Previously, it wasn't really a, um, uh, it was just an introduction to the change of the name of the show. So we've changed the name of this show to the Nicholas Ingle Experience and uh, really me sharing my life experience with you guys in what I hope will be a way that will help you deal with your lives. Um, I've lived quite a lot of life and I've been through quite a bit and faced a lot of challenges. Those of you who know my history will understand and um, I hope through those experiences it can help you. The purpose of this show is to really help you find ways to increase your strength both emotionally spiritually physically as well and on that note we have a um, a website the, <laughs> a podcast and a, a video a youtube channel set up for the gym where we'll be covering the training stuff stuff that i talk about um, in in the upcoming book from the bar to the bar where we discuss the value of training in building mental toughness and tenacity. And that's really, uh, that'll focus more on the actual training, the actual training aspects of that. We also will have guests on the show, ordinary people having done extraordinary things, just as a way of showing and sharing with you guys that, uh, you know, we can do incredible things, we can overcome incredible things. Um, we're, we're capable of doing amazing things. Wanted to chat today just briefly with you guys about my post. So I don't know if you guys can still see the bruises up. I started going back to fighting classes uh, last week, Monday. And the reason for that is I'm going to be 50 this year. And there are a couple of things that I wanted to get done uh, or starting to do when I was 50 again. So this year, or well, 2020, very challenging for everyone. We had to change the way that we live. We have to change the way that we deal with our family and friends. We have to change the way that we socialize. We have to change the way that we de-stress and that we unwind. We had to alter everything. And as simple as that was for me to do as an alcoholic, because I've done it before. When I stopped drinking, I realized I had to change my life entirely in an instant. It was a make a decision to stop drinking or die. It was that simple. I had to make a decision to change how I worked or potentially lose everything that I'd spent 10, 11 years building up and 30 years working on um, in, in business. And I did it. But because it's simple, it doesn't mean that it was easy. And it also didn't mean that it didn't come with a lot of consequences a lot of stress and pressure and anxiety. And I've learned to cope and deal with these things because I have tremendous anxiety. It's probably the reason I started drinking was to cope and deal with my anxiety. Um, and being sober, I still have this anxiety, but I've chosen to deal with it cognitively. So not in any other way other than being aware of my anxiety, understanding what it is, feeling it, and understanding that it'll pass. Easier again said than done. Absolutely terrifying on an aeroplane. So I realized that I'm getting, I'm aging, and maybe I've got another 30 years left of being crazily, awesomely physical, you know, into my 80s or 90s. Who knows? You know, I'm planning on being here till about 140. Um, but I wanted to start the fighting again. The challenge that I found is living in Johannesburg, I don't enjoy walking in Joburg. I enjoy walking as an exercise, but not in Johannesburg. Um, I just, 
it's a beautiful city, but it's not something that I enjoy. At the coast, Cape Town, Umschlange, wherever I am, absolutely can walk for hours. So I made a decision to start training again with a dear friend of mine, Dion, who is a phenomenal martial artist, a phenomenal teacher, but he trains at a very high level and expects a very high level from his students. So I posted a picture on Friday, a couple of pictures of the bruises that I achieved, attained over the week. And it's hard. It hurts and it's sore. And I'll be honest with you guys, there are times in those sessions where I want to stop. I want to quit. I want to walk out of there because it seriously hurts. You're getting hit on the same place with bare knuckles again and again and again. And it's a bruise on top of a bruise. A bruise from Monday became a bruise on Wednesday, became a bruise uh, on, on Friday. <laughs> so that's a that's a you know the the challenge sorry <laughs> phone call i put my phone on silent but i didn't turn it off so i wanted to stop but what that gave me was a, an hour out of my head and an hour not to think about anything not to think about work not to think about coaching not to plan the week the month the years ahead that are coming not to try and resolve um, you know, problems that we're dealing with in the business, challenges, these different things. It's an hour off. It's a holiday. And this is what I speak to the addicts that I train at the rehab centers. Our physical training gives us three things. I mean, many things. Firstly, it's what everyone understands. You get into better shape. You get more... Um, you're able to move better, you're able to recover better, you have more energy, you have more vitality, you have better posture. All of these wonderful things, and that carries through into better performance at work, into better quality of life. But for the addict, or anyone struggling really, because what is addiction? Addiction is using a tool that's inappropriate to deal with trauma. Um, or pain or something that we don't want to deal with we use something that's not appropriate for us that's not healthy for us in the long term that's not beneficial for us in the long term to change how we're feeling that's what I've learned over the years and that's what I've seen with the thousands of addicts that I've worked with we need to change we need to get out of our head we need to stop feeling one way and change try and feel another way getting hit really hard repeatedly by Dion I wanted to stop <laughs> I want it to change. I don't want to be there. But the point of the, one of those values that I get out of that training is being there helps me become comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that's something we'll discuss a little bit later. So we said the first thing, obviously, of the benefit of the training is the physical. And, and that's why most people train. The second benefit is the fact that you... It, it forces you to do more than you believed you were capable of. So if I have someone who knows they can only do four push-ups, but through my skill set, my coercion, my sneakiness, remember I sold insurance for 15 years, I can get them to do 10 push-ups. Just by being there, by motivating them, by pushing them, by being there each step of the way for every rep, talking them through it, occupying their mind. I need to be louder in their head than the voices telling them to stop. Once we get those 10 push-ups done and we repeat that format, that type of thing throughout the, the, the training session and then throughout the different training sessions, what happens is, and I've seen this with myself and I've seen this with others, what can happen is we start to then question our other limiting self-beliefs. So where we know, we genuinely know, we can only do four push-ups at a stretch, and then suddenly we do 10. I'm not talking about five, I'm talking about like 10. Suddenly we can start to question the other areas of our life where we have limiting self-beliefs. I can't get more clients. 
I can't resolve this issue with my partner. I can't do this because I'm not capable. I can't do that because I don't have the skills. I can't do this because I don't believe in myself. We can start to understand that when we remove that, when we are capable and able to do things we genuinely believe that we couldn't do, then that opens a lot of doors to us in what we can achieve in life. And that comes down to simple building quality of life. The more that we believe we can achieve, the more that we believe in ourself, the more we improve our quality of life. Because effectively it gives us more control, gives us more power. The more that we believe we can do, the more powerful we, we, we feel, the more in control we feel. I mean, control is an illusion to a degree, but the more in control that we feel, the more capable we feel of controlling where our lives are going. And the third thing which I'm finding incredibly valuable with the training at the moment and which I've seen with my addicts is that it's an hour out of my head. Now, I'm not sitting on the beach drinking a double espresso, looking at the sea and vegging. It's an hour in discomfort and in pain and in pushing and in shortness of breath and in wanting to die in the corner, wanting to throw up a kidney. You know, and I think a lot of my clients will be listening to this and chuckling that, you know, oh, good, coach, you're going through the same thing you put us through all the time. Absolutely. But it's an hour out of my head where just surviving that hour, just pushing through that hour fills my mindset so much fills my head so much that there can't be anything else in there. And it's uh, th that's the vacation. Because I can't travel as much as I want to. We can't travel as much as we want to. I can't spend time with my family as, as I would like to. I can't spend time with my friends as I'd like to. I can't be out. I can't be socializing. I was chatting to a client about this this morning. The reason that the year has been, one of the reasons 2020 was so incredibly stressful for so many of us is we didn't have our usual breaks, our usual mini vacations, our usual respites from what we were going through on a, on a daily basis, from what we were enduring. You know, stressful day, go to Michalisburg, go shopping, go for lunch with friends, hang out. All of that stuff has now been removed. So we got to be present. So what I would like to say to you guys, and you know, this is not a marketing ploy for the gym of anything, and there's, there's training available on the gym YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. And you know, it 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 comes down to just finding something that you enjoy, finding something that feeds your soul. And I'm not talking about something that's easy, and it doesn't have to be easy. If you were great at rugby in high school, you know, do some of those rugby drills that you, you used to as a kid. Put yourself in an uncomfortable position. If you were great at swimming or track and field or you didn't do any physical training at school, start doing some physical stuff with some basic planks, some basic static holds, things that challenge you and get that conversation going inside of your head where your body is screaming at you to stop and your mind is screaming at you to you're going to carry on and that argument fills our head and nothing else is allowed in there which means there's no anxiety or guilt or shame or pain or pressure or stress because we fill the head with that ah, I have to stop I have to stop. I can't. And then we start looking. You know what I'm talking about. We start looking for those um, ways of justifying to ourselves why we should stop, why we should not carry on. Every reason we need like, okay, um, you know what? I'll, I'm going to stop this and then I'll push harder in the next set. Or I'm going to stop this and I'll try next week. Or this is mad. There's no way I can do this. I need to stop. But we set ourselves a safe and appropriate goal. And I'm talking about very, and this is, vitally important guys I'm talking about training in a safe and an appropriate manner i'm not talking about injuring yourself or hurting yourself or pushing yourself so hard that you end up in trouble talk about training in a safe healthy appropriate manner whether it's doing a wall sit against the wall for 10 seconds 
and repeating that five or six times. Find something that you enjoy. And I spoke earlier about um, about rugby and these soccer, these things that we did at school. Find something that you love doing in high school and find a way to start doing that again from a physical activity or as a kid because you want to bring back those fun memories, those joyful memories. If you've got an old mate that you used to train with rugby on, get hold of him uh, or her on Zoom and train together. You know, if you can't train on Zoom, set yourself challenges for a plank, for a run, for push-ups, for squats. Get hold of those mates of yours that you were at school with, you played netball with, you swam with, whatever, and, and find a way just to connect. And it doesn't have to be for an hour. It can be for five minutes, for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes. Because the hard training when those voices come on and there's nothing else in our head other than our head, our body trying to tell us to stop, that's where we have our mini vacations, our mini breaks that can replace the real holiday, the, the, the lunch with friends, the dinner with family, the, the, the time away that we don't have access to anymore at the moment. It served me so well that those, I was in Cape Town for five days, and I think those three hours have done, of training last week, have done my mental health so much good that, um, uh, that, that they did, they did me, they served me better than the, the week in Cape Town, to be honest. Um, because also, listen, it's a lot less stressful in terms of flights and hotels and, and other people and anxiety around, um, you know, people without masks and all of this stuff that we carry with us. So find something to do and f- just find a way to push back to training, irrespective of what age you are. Do it in a s- safe, healthy an appropriate way. I think if you go and Google my name in Men's Health magazine, South Africa, I did an article, Men's Health did a feature on me, I think three or four, four years ago, uh, four years ago. And um, I spoke about a couple of the static holds that I do with the, uh, with the addicts. And that article's up on, uh, it's up on the web. So go and check that out if you want to get a few ideas. We need to do more things right now more so now than ever that are an expression of self-love that are an expression of self-worth that are an expression of self-care because my experience and from having chatted to a few people it still feels like 2020 (laughs) and the december holiday this long holiday feels like a short holiday in june in the middle of the year So we need to make sure that we're doing things to look after ourselves, that we're doing things to care for ourselves. And this is one way to do that. There there are many others. I mean, there's service, there's helping others, there's art, photography, all these wonderful creative outlets. But what I love about the hard training and what I've seen it, the benefit it's given people over the 14 years that I've been sober and using this with people, is that it, it's a proper vacation. When you fill your head with those, that voice screaming at you to stop, nothing else can get in there, and it's a wonderful break. So guys, I mean, that's 18-odd, 19 minutes. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, please, what I would like to ask you is, if there's anything that you're struggling with, if there's anything that you'd like me to talk about and share my experience on, please leave a comment below. Um, the show's for you guys, and it would mean a great deal to me. That Let me know, what, what are you work, struggling with? What are you pushing through? Where are you finding challenges? Um, I know a lot of people have approached me over the past couple of months, several months, where they're worried about the amount of alcohol that they're drinking, and that they panic now. In South Africa, we've had a ban on alcohol. Um, where they, you know, it's just it started out as fun, and it started out at five, six in the afternoon, five in the afternoon, and sometimes it's ten in the morning now. 
Um, so if you are struggling with that, I mean, you can on both all of these systems, you can DM and private message and stuff. So um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And um, I'm happy to, it would mean a lot to me to be able to discuss those topics and share my experiences on, on how I dealt with something the same or, or similar. And um, that again, is the purpose of the show. It's for you guys. So guys, thank you so much for listening. And uh, I love you all, as you know, and uh, take care of yourselves, guys. Be safe, look after yourself, love yourself, and do something every day to show yourself that you love yourself. Okay, guys, I love you all. Oos.